facing the fall, students in St. Johns County went back to class today with new safety protocols. The district also released its COVID-19 dashboard so parents can monitor cases at each school. Right now, 95 students are positive for COVID out of more than 45,000 students in the district. For perspective, that is less than 1%. And those cases were all reported by parents not sent home after a positive test at school. 60 staff members also tested positive. This is video of students filing into Fruit Cove Middle School this morning, where five cases have been reported among students. Masks are optional in all of the county's public schools. There are also no temperature checks and no desk shields. No desk shields. However, parents can request them. Schools will be deep cleaned and sprayed with an anto with an antimicrobial treatment. As COVID-19 cases continue to mount up, some Duval County parents are making the decision to pull their children out of in-person learning and switch to virtual instruction. This comes just one week after the majority of Florida students return to class. In that short time, the Duval County School District has counted 66 cases among its students and 16 cases among employees. News for Jacks reporter Joe McLean is joining us live from Douglas Anderson School of the Arts, where school administrators announced Friday there were three new COVID cases among students. He's been talking with parents about making this difficult decision between the classroom and the home computer. Joe? Yeah, these parents I spoke to said they prefer in-person learning in a vacuum that is they say uh, they actually really really like their child schools but they're having to weigh that against the risk of COVID-19 in the classroom and that's a risk they tell me they're just not willing to take Throughout the pandemic, I've kept in touch with Raleen Sullivan, the mother of four Duval County students. She recently made the tough decision to pull her youngest from their magnet program in favor of Duval Virtual Instruction Academy. So even though he loses his magnet spot, um, we thought that that was worth it. You know, his health is worth it first, first and foremost. So we pulled him out of his um, current um, elementary magnet school. Sullivan's older children are attending in person, wearing face masks and protected by the vaccine. But she says her youngest is not eligible for the shot yet. With the cases soaring, COVID cases soaring in Duval, with my youngest son not being vaccinated, um, my husband and I decided that it just wasn't um, for the for the benefit of my child, that it would be better for him to stay home. Likewise, Beth Sullivan, no relation to Raleen, has two children in the district, but is in the process of moving them out of DCPS and into Florida virtual school. Well, unfortunately, as much as I absolutely love our kids' school, and I do, I love their school, I love their teachers, they love their friends. Um, but I had a lot of reservations going into the school year just with everything going on. She said the case counts are too high for her to be comfortable sending her kids to a packed school building. Both mothers told me the decision was tough and stressful. Oh, my gosh. Um, the This has been literally pure anxiety for me every day. We felt like we were pressured to either choose keeping my kids safe or keeping him in his magnet school, which, like I said, eventually could uh, affect his middle school magnet school. That could affect his high school magnet uh, you know, school. So it was a big decision for us, and it was really tough. Raleen Sullivan actually received a notice from the district offering her an opportunity to return her child to the coveted magnet program from DVIA by Wednesday if she changes her mind. She told me that's not going to happen. Right now, more than 2,800 students are enrolled in Duval Virtual Instruction Academy. That is about 1,200 more than were in that platform last year. We also requested the latest enrollment numbers for Florida Virtual School, but we have not received that information yet. Reporting live, I'm Joe McLean, Channel 4, The Local Station.